Okay, so what are you saying people and welcome back to my channel and today I've got another weekly analysis for you guys So on the screen other pairs will be analyzing today But make sure you stay to the end of the video because I will be going into depth analysis about what's happened during this week's trading week And potentially what could be happening during next week's trading week So make sure you stay to the end of the video for all of that But with all that said guys, let's just get straight into it First up we've got Euro USD Okay, so up first we've got Euro USD. So for this pair, we actually saw some more downside momentum this week for Euro USD. The market is still very, very bearish here. I was expecting to see the market flip bullish this week after we did see some nice momentum coming to the markets uh, to the upside towards the end of last week on Friday and was expecting that momentum to continue into the following week. However, we failed to break through that resistance and failed to hit the targets up here. So the market, as you can see, failed to break through that 1.18800 mark, flipped bearish again, and is still looking quite bearish now. So for next week, I'm expecting to see that momentum continue to the downside. I think from a daily point of view, you can see a push back down into these lows here around the 1.17 mark. So yeah, more downside for EURUSD this week. As long as we stay below that same resistance that we saw in the 4H. So if I go back to the 4H real quick, as long as we stay below that level there, I'm seeing more downside. It'll be nice to see a bit more retracement to the upside, look for more entries, and then shorts back down into those lows around the 1.17 mark. So yeah, only looking for shorts next week for your USD. The market is looking very, very bearish so far. If it can break through that level, then yeah, we might turn bullish. Then we can probably look at these levels back up here again around the 1.19500 mark but for now it's looking very bearish here it looks like we're failing to break past that level so yeah only looking for shorts for next week for your usd like i said if the market can retrace to the upside first that'd be great uh, better risk to reward there and short it back down into these lows then if you can break through those lows then you can look to those daily lows down there on the 1.17 mark next we're going to take a look at usd jpy Okay, so up next we've got USD JPY. So for this pair, we saw some nice upside retracement uh, to start the week off, which was expected. We did have this nice push to the downside, breaking through some structure, also breaking through this trend line here as well. So we were expecting to see some retracement now for USD JPY, and we did see that at the start of the week. Then we were expecting to see the market sell off again, coming back into key areas of resistance and see a nice push to the downside. You can see here on the daily, we had a nice break and retest of this trend line here. So one, two, three, four, four tests of the market holding that trend line as support. Then we came back, broke through that area and now held it as resistance and, DC, and did see a nice move to the downside. And we were looking at this area here as place where the market might find some resistance and go short again. So for the market there, we had a really nice move to the downside, uh, I believe on maybe Wednesday there, really nice move to the downside, great shorts if you did get involved to that. I'm still expecting more downside for UCJPY, looking at this from a daily four hour point of view. We did see some strength just before price got to these lows, which was the target for UCJPY. We were expecting price to come to these lows, and as you can see, we just missed that, and we're seeing some momentum to the upside, but I think it's gonna be short lived. I think we can still continue bearish here. So again, looking for that retracement to complete, and then we can go short again, take these back to the lows, and I think we can go a little bit one step further if i go back onto the daily chart we do have this really nice area of support just below where the market uh, held uh, last week i think if we do see some new lows this is probably where the market wants to go really nice area of support where we did hit the trend line and see it's an, a nice injection of bullish momentum around the 109 200 mark so yeah only shorts for me this week for ucj white unless we start taking out this prior uh, level there if we take up that then we might be turning bullish and we could actually have a good chance of coming back to those highs But for me as long as we stay underneath that point turn bearish again looking for those shorts first target will have to be this prior low here because we can still reject that area turn bullish again so that will have to be the first target but if we can break through that and see that bearish momentum really kick in then we can aim for this target here just below that area around the 109 200 mark and next we've got usd cat Okay, so next up we've got USD CAD. So for this pair, we actually saw more upside this week. I was expecting to see a bit more retracement this week for USD CAD after that strong reaction that we had uh, towards the end of last week. I was expecting to see maybe another test of this trend line, and then we can judge whether USD CAD wants to stay bullish or not. Because if we did see a break of that trend line, we might be turning bearish. But if we saw a nice bounce, that'd be a great place to look for buys. However, as you can see, we did not quite get to the trend line there. The market held this support there uh, one, two, three, four times before continuing to the upside. So overall, USD CAD 
it's still looking very, very bullish here. And I think we can see more upside coming into next week for USD CAD. We are trading, however, in a very strong area of resistance, this 1.26 level here. As you can see, we found resistance here many times before absolutely dumping to the downside um, a few weeks ago. Now we're back at that same area. So I'm, I am expecting to see some type of bearish reaction to the downside. The market is at a very strong area of resistance. So I'm expecting to see some retracement to the downside, maybe back to this area here, prior resistance now turn support. And then if you do hold, hold that as support, I can see more buys breaking through that area. And potentially come to this area here because it does look like used to CAD wants to go into reversal mode and we could actually be seeing some more bullish momentum in the markets even in the higher time frames like the weekly and the monthly and really start to reverse this bearish trend that we've seen in the markets for quite a few months now um for usd cad as you can see it started all the way back here and we've just been trending to the downside so i do think a reversal could be on um on the cards right now for usd cad and if we can break through this 1.26 barrier i can see the market pushing to this next barrier up there so yeah only looking for buys right now for usd cad i do see some short-term selling um selling opportunities since we are at that very strong resistance and i'm expecting to see some downside from that area so maybe in the lower time frames like the hourly 15 minute or maybe five minute the might be some nice selling opportunities back down to around this area here but if we can hold that area support form another higher low i think we can look to target the highs back here again and if we can get a breakout i think the market can come all the way up to around the 1.27 400 mark so i'm seeing more upside for used to cad this week but first a bit of retracement then we can get involved in that bias to the upside up next is euro gbp Sorry to interrupt the video guys, but if you are enjoying the content and you find it useful, make sure you go hit the subscribe button down below and also make sure you drop a like as well. It really does help the channel out. But anyway, back to the video. Okay, so next up we've got Euro GBP. So for this pair, we did see some more downside this week, which was expected for this pair. We did push back up again um, towards the end of the week, but I think it's still retracement. Uh, last week we finished around this area here, right in these lows, and I was expecting to see a break of this support, which we did see. However, it was short-lived. Nice break there. Market came back above, messed around a bit, and then we're seeing some momentum to the upside. So overall, Euro GBP, like I've been saying for the past few weeks, actually, this pair is still very, very choppy, very tricky to trade, and actually. You can catch the tops and the bottoms of this range um yeah it's just a very tricky pair to trade overall the market bias is still to the downside still making lower lows and lower highs you can see this trend line here is still very uh, much intact holding firm for those wicks so as long as we stay underneath it like i said from last week i'm still seeing more downside for this pair we do have this daily support which i think we can go uh, come and test if we still remain underneath that trend line of course come and test test that area either break through it see some new lows or maybe start to give a bit of a double bottom and a reversal because we are definitely running out of that bearish momentum with that price action so for next week for your gp selling opportunities like i said i probably won't be looking to trade this pair just because it's very choppy but if you are some selling opportunities do look good at that trend line if we do break through that trend line see strong daily close above that and the market starts to create higher highs higher lows and i think we could be in for a reversal and seeing the market turn bullish and probably eventually come back to these highs up there um around the not uh 0 0.87 mark so uh euro gp for now more downside if you do get a back above that trend line there uh, late in the week you can change your bias to, to bullish and look for some buys on those pullbacks but for now we're holding that trend line firmly so, so more downside for your gp and aiming for around that 0 0.84800 area okay so up next we've got AUD USD and now we're going to take a look at AUD USD so for this pair as you can see we have more downside this week uh, for AU and Ashley, I was expecting to see a bit more retracement for this pair. We did have this trend line here connecting those lower highs there, so one, two, three. I was expecting to see a fourth test before the market came back down again. But as you can see, we did form resistance here early on in the week, and the market kept trying to break through it. However, it failed to do so. You can see one test there, second test there, and the third test before we did collapse to the downside. So the market for AU right now is looking very bearish, and I think some more downside. Uh, for next week does look likely as long as we stay below this area here because this is now our lower high if we do break through this then we might be com coming for the trend line up there connecting those uh, lower highs but for now i think if we if we just focus on price action below this level here we could be seeing some really nice shorts for next week for au uh, so yeah looking for a bit of retracement it'd be nice to see another test of that level again maximize the risk reward and then we can short it back down into those lows uh, if i do go on the daily time frame you can see we are coming back into a key level level uh, of resistance which now will be acting as support so that major um, 
level there if I take that across 0.74 uh, we're right into the thick of it now so we might be seeing a bit more retracement but like I said as long as we can stay below that level there in the 4H so go back to the 4H quickly as long as we can stay below that level there shorts do look good for AU and we can take that further to the downside we also do have this level here on the weekly um, as you can see weekly resistance there nice break and retest for that doji as well so if we can break through that level we might see the market go and fill this gap to the downside so AU is looking like we might be seeing a lot more downside over the next coming weeks as long as we keep this price action together so yeah a AUD USD more shorts for next week again for opportunities wait for a bit of retracement because the market right now is creating some new lows don't really, don't really want to be selling into that of course we do have that support there as well so we'll be looking to see if we can see some upside to start the week off and then take this market down again now let's take a look at NZD CAD Okay, so up next we've got NZD CAD. So for this pair, as you can see, we saw some nice momentum to the upside, and it does look like the market is starting to reverse here. As you can see, we've been dumping to the downside for quite some time now, but it looks like we're starting to get this bowl shape here for NZD CAD. Uh, you can see we've gone from making lower lows here and now start to make higher lows which we did recently have on USD CAD uh, but now NZD CAD is giving this bowl shape here so this normally does mean reversal so if the price action does keep up I'm looking only for buys for uh, NZD CAD next week so I think we can see some more upside for this pair and eventually probably coming back into these highs all the way up there so yeah my buys for now uh, for NZD CAD is the upside the market is coming to a very strong area of resistance this 0 0.88500 mark as you can see resistance there to the downside resistance there again to the downside as you can see now we actually kind of pull back a little bit there with that daily candle on the Friday so yeah I'm think for next week to start off some retracement to the downside but again like I said we've got this bowl shape here if we do see that move to the downside it's likely just going to give us another higher low and give another excuse for us to look for some buys so yeah and the CAD here waiting for a bit of retracement to the downside don't really want to buy into that resistance there very strong rejections on the daily not really a smart move so i want to see the market come to the downside a little bit uh, first before i look to buy we do have some nice prior resistance here in the market on the daily so if i go back to the daily quickly nice prior resistance here will return support so if you come back we test that area around there around the 0 0.87600 mark hold this as support maybe a double bottom triple bottom there some reversal signs here uh, then we can take this back up into 0 0.88500 so yeah like i said bias is the upside for the cad wanting price to pull back give us another higher low like it's done here like it's done there like it's done there give us another higher low then buys back into this area here and then potentially if we can get a break of that we can go a lot lot higher so um, yeah, NZD CAD buys only for next week. Maybe some short term sales from this level here if you want to take that down on the lower time frames. That does look good because, like I said, very, very strong level of resistance. We probably will see some downside to start the week off. So, some short term buys do look good. But I'm going to wait for the buying opportunities, wait for price to give another higher low, and then we can take this higher or potentially the break and retest because, again, it doesn't have to retrace. Um, eventually it will retrace but doesn't have to now so you actually might break through that area see the break and retest and then continue so that is another option there but if you can retrace see a higher low great place to buy then we can target these highs here and then if you can get a break we can go a lot further next up we've got GBP NZD okay so next up we've got pound nzd so for this pair we did see a quite nice dump to the downside towards the end of the week at the start of the week when i was doing my analysis i was expecting to see a push back into the highs which we did see with those wicks as you can see a nice push back into those highs but i was expecting to see some new highs past that into around the two maybe two uh, 0.500 mark but as you can see we didn't quite make that so the market rejected that resistance fell back to the downside and now is looking very very bearish here if i do zoom out we still do have this um trend line intact here connect the lows so one two three and i do think we can see a test of these lows here because the market is looking bearish and this is potentially the market coming back to reject that area giving us maybe a double top and we could see the market reverse to the downside potentially so pound nzd for next week only looking for selling opportunities we'll be looking to see if we can get pushed back into these lows here uh, kind of where that trend line and that support meets up around the 1.95 mark so yeah for opportunities want to see some upside first because we did see quite a nice drop to the downside there so looking for that retracement if you can retrace that would be nice 
give us another lower high then we can short it back down into that support slash into that trend line and then we'll see what happens on the daily chart whether we get another bounce or whether we break through the trend line because if we do break through the trend line you might be looking at a reversal and price coming a lot lot deeper um for pound is deep but if you do see a bounce of that there's a good chance we'll probably see a push back into those highs there so power and entity need to be a bit more reactive for this pair for now uh, the most likely move is to the downside back into that support back into that trend line and then from there we can make our judgments where we're looking for buys or we're going to, look to sell the market because we're breaking through that trend line so power and entity to start the week off really nice opportunity opportunity for some shorts if we can get that retracement then we'll make our judgment from there where we're looking for buys if we get the bounce or sells if you get the break. Next, we're gonna move on to CAD JPY. Okay, so next up we've got CAD JPY. So for this pair, we did see some more downside this week. We were holding this key area of resistance as I was doing my analysis last week and actually pretty much uh, throughout the start of the week as well, as you can see some nice wicks into that um, support. And I said, if we, as long as we can hold this support, there's a good chance of us seeing some more upside for CAD JPY this week. But as you can see on Wednesday, I believe we closed below. And as you can see, we are seeing some downside. So CAD JPY is still looking very bearish. We're back underneath that key level of resistance. And I I think as long as we can stay below that i do see some more shorts for cad jpy back into around the 86 mark so yeah looking for shorts for cad jpy just to fill this range to the downside as you can see we have that big rocket to the upside there not much retracement so i think the market's just going to fill that um, that range to the downside back into this level here so um, shorts to 86 do look really really good for CAD JPY we're going the 4h time frame uh, you can see the market is still looking quite bearish there so we do have some support there to watch out for, but for me, I want to be looking for opportunities if the market can retrace a little bit, give us another lower high, and then we can short it back into this area, and then a break of that will probably take us into those lows there. So CAD JPY shorts do look good, but we do need to stay below this level, 88.200 mark. If you start creating highs past that, then we might be turning bullish again and seeing a move back into those highs there. So make sure you stay reactive, but for now, all those signs are really pointing to the downside for CAD JPY. So if you are looking for buys from this support, it's it's got to be short term in my opinion because I still do see price breaking through this support here and coming into that 86 level down there so looking for some retracement to the upside because we don't really want to sell into that um, support so looking for some retracement to the upside if you get a nice lower high formation we'll take it back down into that same support and if you can get a break we'll hold into the trade and see if you can get a move back down to 86 200 down there up next is GBP USD Okay, so next up we've got pound USD. So as you can see for this pair, a nice kind of closure there to the downside on Friday. The market is looking quite bearish now, and I think we can see some more downside this week. Last week, I was expecting to see a push to the upside because we did have this strong candle closure down Friday. And I was expecting to see a bit of retracement and see that momentum continue to the upside from last week. However, that momentum died out. Uh, if I do jump onto the 4H time frame, you can see we found this resistance at 1.39 and we kept trying to break it all week, but failed to do so. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five attempts are trying to break through this area, but we just failed to do so and the momentum uh, switched back to the bears and collapsed to the downside. So for next week, I'm seeing more downside uh, for pound USD, not looking to buy this pair at all, just looking for selling opportunities. So, uh, 1.37 is going to be the target for pound USD. It was a target all the, um, all those weeks ago when we first had this dump to the downside, but um, we found some momentum to the upside, so we started to switch our bias. But it looks like that 1.37 is very much back on. So this double bottom, I think we can get another test of that area. So if I jump back to the 4H, we'll be looking for some retracement because you can see the market is looking very um, bearish right now and it's coming into that support. So don't want to sell the market now, waiting for some retracement, um, hopefully start of the week, maybe a nice test of this area, and then we can sell it back down into those lows there. So a nice break and retest of that. So you know, support, support, break through it, retest that area, hold as resistance, and then a nice push to the downside. Then we can take advantage of that move on the lower time frames and you know, maximize our risk towards so pound usd more shorts for this pair back down to 1.37 as well i'll be targeting we might see some um temporary buys from this 1.37 level uh because it has uh, you know a lot of momentum behind it and it is a strong level so maybe if we do come back to this area some buys could be forming later on in the week but for now looking for sales not looking for buys for pound usd want to see a bit of retracement maybe back to 1.38 then we can take that back down to 1.37 later on in the week and next we're going to see what's happening with gbp cat 
Okay, so now I'm going to move on to pound CAD. So for this pair, as you can see, we did see some more upside this week, which was expected last week. We were trading around this area here, and we did say the market has a good chance of coming back to 1.74, which is this key level of resistance here for pound CAD. As you can see, resistance all throughout here, was support there, resistance here as well. Bit of a forced breakout there, uh, and now we'll come back to retest that. So for pound CAD this week, I'm seeing some downside for this pair. Uh, just because we'll come back to retest this 1.74 mark and as you can see this is where we grab liquidity before having that massive dump to the downside there for pound cad and normally when you do see false breaks you normally see the market come back to retest it and then continue and i think this is the retest i'm not saying the market's just going to continue all the way to the lows again uh we'll probably make that judgment you know as price goes on and we get more price action but for now uh price is looking like it's retesting that area we've seen a nice bearish candle the next candle so yeah i'm expecting to see some downside now for pound cad if you can get a break of 1.74 hold above it then yeah there's a good chance the market's going to fill that gap uh, and go and test this level here around the 1.75500 mark uh, and see a, a nice push to fill that gap in but at this moment in time we're rejecting 1.74 so i'm looking for some downside now for pound cad back into this area here uh, just above the 1.72 mark so some shorts do look good for pound cad right now we've already seen a bit of a reaction there uh, to the downside there on the 4 8 so looking for some retracement maybe a double top would be nice and we can sell that back down into that 1.72 400 mark and then if you can get a nice bounce of that some buys back again because if I do go back on the daily, you can see what normally happens between uh, this support here and the 1.74. We normally do form a range, really nice range there, really nice range there again before we did have that breakout. So I think we can fluctuate between those two levels uh, for um, the next few days or few weeks potentially for pound CAD. But for now, looking for some downside for this pair back down to 1.72. Then if we can hold this back up to 1.74 again. Okay, up next, we've got GBP JPY. Okay, so next up we've got Pound JPY, and as you can see for this pair, nice dump to the downside this week. I uh, was expecting to see a bit more upside though, as you can see from last week, a lot of bullish momentum there in the markets. Was expecting to see a bit of retracement and some more upside. Similar setup to what uh, Pound USD was presenting us last week as well. A lot of that bullish momentum there on Friday. Was expecting to see that continue, however. Uh, however, it did not. I had a bit of a nice consolidation, a bit of a head and shoulders there as well in this area. You can see left shoulder, head, um, right shoulder. Then we are collapsed into the downside. Was expecting to see a test of that trend line, maybe a fifth or sixth test before we do come back down or you know break through and turn bullish. However, the market didn't quite do that. Found resistance from the 153 mark and then flip um, bearish there. So uh, pound JPY for me is looking very bearish. So I'm not interested. In uh, interested in any buys this week only interested in selling the pound uh, pound yen back into that support there around the 150, uh, 150 mark uh, 150 500 sorry uh, and then back down into 149 500 so yeah more downside for pound jpy not interested in any buys looking to see a bit of retracement first give us a nice lower high then back into the into those lows and if you can get a break of that back into these lows all the way down there so yeah not interested in any buys for pound jpy i want to see that retracement first because you know the market is looking quite bearish after that nice dump there on friday so i want to see the market come back up again uh come back up again give me a lower high take that back down into the into those lows and a break of that back down into those lows down there and up next we're going to take a look at gold and now we're going to take a look at gold so for gold as you can see we're pushing to the upside quite aggressively this week we did break out that consolidation on the 4h as you can see uh, we had a nice wick to the downside there and we broke to the upside quite nicely there uh, for gold so the market is looking quite bullish it's come back down again into this area so if we do find support here i think the market will probably continue to the upside there again for gold uh, i don't think the market um well, obviously it can continue lower but i'm not really favoring that move at this moment in time as you can see we do have this key level of support which the market has um, rejected very key level support big push big push big push to the upside and now having another big push to the upside i think the market will fill this range back into this area here around the 1860 mark so i think there's still more room to the upside just to fill this range here uh this big gap of momentum to the upside so yeah only looking for buys for next week for for gold if you do come back into this consolidation and this was just a big false breakout then yes yeah, some downside could happen but if you do find support here and reject that range there uh because you know essentially having the break 
break and retest of the of the range then i think buys you look really good back into 1860 then from there some probably nice sales could set up after that if you don't break through it of course so uh yeah gold is looking quite bearish with that momentum there but overall we are still pushing to the upside and this potentially is just another higher low for us to see the momentum back to the highs if we do come firmly back uh in this area and start to see the market you know range in this area then you know the market's probably just had a false breakout and after that we might actually break to the downside there but for right now see what the market wants to do in this area here see if it holds it or if it continues to uh to to fall to the downside basically but if we can hold that as support give us another higher low start trading to the upside again uh there's no reason why we can't go reach 1860 this week so yeah more upside for gold as long as we can hold that as support and we don't break back in and then we can go target 1860 all the way up there and last but not least we've got bitcoin and last but not least we've got bitcoin so for bitcoin as you can see we're seeing more downside uh, this week for this pair we failed to get back above this area rejected as resistance and now we're starting to fall to the downside and as you can see we still do have um these lower highs intact here holding that trend line there to the downside failed to break through and we do have a bit of this channel here if i connect these lows um so yeah, Bitcoin right now, I think it's in a bit of retracement mode. We might see another push back into that trend line there, retest that trend line. And if we do hold again, probably see some more downside there for, for Bitcoin. If I do go on the weekly time frame, you can see the market uh, did break through this support here. So if I connect that line there, we were failing to get a close then. And actually last week we did see a close there. Not a very strong close, but we did see a first close before uh, below that line. And as you can see this week, we're really starting to see that momentum. And we do have about 10 hours left of this week. Uh, of this week's candle before it does close obviously you can still pull all the way back up and close bullish uh, something crazy happens but right now it's looking very bearish here and there's, there's a good chance you know it'll close somewhere around where it is now below there so i'm seeing more downside for for bitcoin right now uh, on the daily it's looking bearish weekly it's looking bearish in the four hourly it's looking like it's seeing a bit of retracement but overall it's still very bearish so i do think we'll probably see a push back into these lows here back into that wick there on the twenty nine thousand mark and we might actually see, see some new lows past that point so yeah bitcoin uh, it's not looking good for buys maybe if you do have a breakout of this channel uh, and a pot and a break of that uh 35 000 mark we might see some nice momentum uh, to the upside coming back in but for now it's looking very 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 bearish so yeah a bit more retracement and then maybe at that trend line we collapse again and potentially some new lows past the twenty nine thousand mark okay so that is the end of the video guys i hope you all enjoyed that and found that useful if you are enjoying the content and finding it useful make sure you hit that subscribe button and drop a like if you're feeling generous like always if you have any questions agree or disagree with the analysis drop a comment down below and i will make sure i get back to you guys but thanks again for watching and until the next one I'll catch you guys later.